but there's been big news in the Fordham men's basketball program. They have fired their head coach, Jeff Neubauer. This happened yesterday morning, afternoon. Uh, Neubauer went 61 and 104 in his six seasons as the head coach of the Fordham Rams. His assistant coach, Mike DiPaoli, will remain the interim head coach for the rest of the season. And after that, what will commence is a national search between many candidates who seem to be in the running for this job. Fordham men's basketball, that head coaching position does seem to have a little bit of a, of a ring around it in the minds of a lot of people who are in running for college basketball coaching positions. Um, and there are many people who this could fall upon, this job, uh, come next season. So, Mike, let me ask you, of all the candidates that have been named here, and there have been many who have been named, uh, to you, who, who stands out? Um, okay, so first off, I would say that I think, well, I saw on Twitter, um, basketball insider Jeff Goodman uh, was saying that his phone was blowing up over the head coaching opening. And he was saying that a lot of former college head coaches, assistant coaches, it, it seems to be, he claims, again, this is just one tweet, so who knows, it's going to be a popular opening. Um, that being said, I think one of the um, interesting candidates, and obviously, you know, this just happened recently, so I've only just sort of in the past 24 hours gotten to kind of dive into this. I was reading an article in the New York Post, and one of the names floated was Tim O'Toole. And he's an assistant from Pittsburgh. Uh, he's from White Plains, New York, actually. So local guy. Uh, he even started his coaching career as an assistant back at Fordham in 1988. Um, and what really draws me to Tim is that uh, he's been associated with some winning programs, some of the be better programs in college basketball. So even at a lower level, he's an assistant at Iona, but he's been an assistant at Syracuse, at Duke. He's been an assistant at Seton Hall. And he was also the head coach at Fairfield from 1998 to 2006. And he even won Mac Coach of the Year in 2004. So um, Tim is a very interesting candidate, someone that I would uh, think that the Fordham should be looking at. Obviously, you know, I'm not the Fordham AD. I don't know who they're trying to go after. I think, you know, look, Coach Neubauer, I never had the chance to interview him. I know that, you know, many of our colleagues here at FPV have. I think, you know, he was very generous with his time. Obviously, things didn't work out here uh, with him. I think it's probably best for the program that there's a splitting of the ways. I just think that whoever they hire next needs to be someone that can recruit because we're in the Bronx. And, you know, we're in New York City, and that's the basketball capital of the world. And I think there's tons of local talent. Now, is, is it going to be hard to get a guy to come to a smaller school when he could have maybe better options? Sure. But it's New York. It's Fordham. Uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful for the future. I think there's some other candidates out there, um, you know, for different schools. And But uh, Tim O'Toole is one that I think is interesting. But, um, yeah, I, I think uh, the main thing is we got to get a guy in here who can recruit locally. I think that's a key. Uh, the lore, uh, the lure, excuse me, of a school like Fordham is uh, is a very interesting part of this conversation, especially when not just talking about uh, the head coaching position itself, but just the program in general. Jeff Neubauer is just one of what is now a handful of, um, of people with some esteem in the college basketball community who have taken over that position and have not found too much success in the last two decades. Uh, Derek Wittenberg and Bob Hill and a handful of others. Um, so, Kayla, let me ask you, in, in your assessment of this program, I'm sure you would agree with me in saying there, there is more that needs to be done than just a new head coach. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Fordham has had just two winning seasons since they last reached the NCAA tournament in 1992. I mean, that that's that's a terrible statistic. That is so bad. And that is not just something that is confined to Jeff Neubauer. That's not just a problem that is with a head coach. That is a, like we had talked about earlier in the show, a systemic problem within the organization, within the Fordham athletic organization, that the, there is something about our program right now that we are unable to compete. And a lot of people on Twitter I saw were saying it's because we're in the A-10 now and that's what has changed. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the problem. I think that Fordham has the capability to compete. We are a great school. We are in a prime location in New York City. Why shouldn't we be good? There makes no sense. It makes no sense that we as a Division One team are not good. Um, so I'm not surprised by Jeff Goodman's tweet that it's a desirable opening because I think Fordham is a great spot to be, but I think that there's a lot more that needs to be done within it rather than just hiring a new coach in order for Fordham basketball to be competitive again. I mean, 
it's been 28 years since we've been to the NCAA tournament. That is, that is not good. That's terrible. You know? So I think that there's just a lot more to be done than just one new hire. Yeah. I would say, you know, even just, I mean, look, we're, we're, we, this is a unique sports story in that, you know, when we talk about professional baseball, when we talk about NFL, you know, we're fans, but this is hits most close, much closer to home because we're students. So like we also FUV, we cover these games, we broadcast these games. And I remember uh, like a few, like a few, like a month ago or so, a little, maybe a little further back, uh, a video was circulating on Twitter of Mike Bream when he was obviously, I think it was, well, he wasn't a student anymore, but it was right after he graduated, he was calling a Florida men's basketball game. And uh, it's when the team was good. And the, the reading Russell gym was packed. There, everyone was standing. It was electric. It, it's just crazy to think that, you know, we've been, you know, the three of us were all juniors to think that we've been here and, and Fordham basketball. I mean, we've all been to the games. It's not exactly an electric atmosphere. And I think, you know, even just from beyond a basketball point of view to bring that energy back to this university, I mean, cause also the school markets itself is having division one athletics. And when you say that to prospective students, the first two sports that come to mind are football and basketball. Those are the spectator sports. Those are the sports people come for. And I think the football pro- program has its own issues, and those need to be addressed as well. But now we have an opening now with the basketball team. Obviously, we're going to finish up the season, and I don't think anything's going to change immediately. But this is a prime opportunity. Let's get the energy back in the Bronx. Let's let's get Rose Hill packed again. Unfortunately for us, I think by the time we graduate, you know, they're not going to have turned things around. But we can at least get a coach in place for us to get that energy back. And I just think beyond a basketball standpoint, just winning games, it's just, it's nice to have a team and for future students at Fordham to, to have a team that you can cheer for to go to the games to, and, and just, you know, you know, enjoy the atmosphere. I just think it's important for the university. It's also uh, worth noting here while we're talking about this specifically is that, um, you know, a, an, an issue that has been apparent for two decades is obviously not the fault of any one particular person especially not any one particular player in collegiate sports. You're on the team for at most four and a half years. So it, it, it's, it does not fall on any one particular person. It, it, is, it, it, is, a, it is a changing of, of the guards that needs to be done in some way. Uh, that might not be anything particularly tangible, but uh, new athletic director, Ed Cole, um, who will officially uh, assume his position by this time next year, um, if, if all goes as planned, um, then, you know, then perhaps we will see that, that change in, in some particular, uh, excuse me, particularly tangible way. Um, but Caleb, Fordham is, finds itself in a, in a very odd position because, of course, it's an it's a organization or, excuse me, a program that uh, a head coach would want to come to uh, because there, there is something surrounding it and there would be a certain level of, of pride and, and a resume builder, if you will, of being able to accomplish that. Uh, but also, you know, they they play in the oldest gym in the country. They um, have uh, continued to struggle, um, and many head coaches have have come and have not been able to really succeed in that kind of way. And it's clearly not a problem of just the the whole athletic department in general, because the Fordham women. Uh, continue to dominate and perhaps are still on an uphill climb um, in these recent years. So uh, Kayla, it's clearly more, it's, it, it, it's not, it's not everything and it's not something. Yes. (laughs) No, I think you're right. Um, There are low expectations for any coach who's going to come to this gym. There are low expectations set for them. So I think that that opens up the field to a lot of different um, coaches who maybe want to get their feet wet in division one basketball. Why not go to Fordham? They don't have anything going for them right now anyways. So I feel like there is a big pool of candidates who are going to be interested in coming to this position. And then even though there are low expectations, there is still that level of prestige. Like you were saying, it is the most historic gym I think that Fordham is a great university. I mean, I'm not an ambassador for it, but I love it. Um, And so I think that there would be a lot of, like you said, just pride in being able to revitalize a program that seemingly is dead. And so I think that there would be a lot of excitement around that for any new coach who is interested in 
a comeback story. I mean, what an underdog could be even a movie one day, you know, it has that type of making to it. It's a historic gym. It's in a historic program. It's in New York City. I think that there are a lot of good selling points for the position, but I think that there are also a lot of downsides to it. Yeah, I would just say one last thing real quickly, and it kind of reminds me, honestly, a little bit of the position that Robert Sala is in with the Jets. The expectations are so low for whoever comes in next. All you have to do is avoid being the, the people that came before you. Just win a few more games, and you'll be fine. I mean, with Robert Sala, as long as you're not Adam Gase, the fans will like you. And, and for the next head coach of Fordham, whoever that may be, as long as you win – if you can get us to a 500 record, at least we're, we're going to love it. We're going to say, Hey, this is improvement. I think if you want to, for any coach that wants to make their mark in college basketball, especially in New York city, I think this could be the place to be. Absolutely. This is the, it's a program that finds itself in perhaps the most interesting position in the whole country in, in, in being a team that has uh, had its struggles, but is in the epicenter of what basketball is innately, um, so I, I think I think I speak not only for all of Fordham, but really for the whole country of college basketball fans when they say, you know, we, we hope for this situation to improve quite clearly.